Can you discuss how bees and butterflies see? Well, the bees and butterflies don't see like we do. They don't see very precise images. They see things in a very fuzzy pattern. They have rounded eyes, right? So their eyes are composed of many different omatidia, diff many different facets, many different lenses. And so they don't have the resolution we do. They do not see sharp images at a distance. So what they have to do is they have to move through the environment in a kind of a zigzag sort of fashion so that they can refine the, how the image is moving across their eye okay. so they can determine how to home in on a flower. And so that's the way they do it because most of what they see looks like blurs and blobs and kind of misshapen things. I mean, if we could see what a bee actually sees, we wouldn't recognize most of what it is. Now, I think we're going to see what you look like uh -oh. to a bee. Now, it doesn't show it exactly, but the bees see kind of out of focus and with a wide angle. So that's how people are seeing you right now. So I look like a blob, right? Yeah. Yeah, well, I've, I've been told that. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So can you explain that flicker fusion frequency? That's like yeah. a really interesting term to Yeah, the, the flicker fusion frequency. Now try saying that fast about five times. You can't do it. <laughs> All right, but what flicker fusion frequency means is that the number of images that you might see before something becomes continuous motion now, when you go to the movies, you're seeing something at 32 frames a second, 32 images a second, and it looks like continuous motion to you. But if we took a bee to a movie, it would see 32 distinct images. In fact, if we were to show a movie to a bee so the bee would see something that is continuous motion, it would have to go at about 200 frames a second or maybe even higher. Otherwise, what the bee would see would be flicker. Like it a strobe. Would, yeah, like a strobe okay. light. It would be, be, be a flicker. So this flicker fusion frequency is very important for how an organism moves through the environment. The faster your fish and can't say that flicker fusion frequency, the better it is. That is, the higher it is, the more easily you can move rapidly through the environment. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. But there's a really funny thing about this. You can have a very good ability to see things that move fast, right? And this helps you detect predators if they're coming at you rapidly, which is why I tell children don't chase that butterfly because they can see a rapid movement across their eyes but they can't see something slow. Okay. That's and that's how a praying mantid makes its living, right? Mm -hmm. Is that's praying? how you caught that yeah, butterfly. Yeah, that's how I caught that butterfly. You, you move really slowly, and then at the last second, you move really fast, okay. right? right? Yeah. And that's how a lot of predators make their living, because they take advantage of the fact that the flicker fusion frequency does not allow something to see something that's moving slowly. 